Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland, and please only listen to this thing when you can safely close your eyes. Now, as you may be aware, you may not be aware, you may not care, but I have now only got one website, which is jasonnewland.com. I've got rid of the all the other websites as well as... the host for jasonnewland.com the original one so what that means is I have cut down the amount of money that I need to pay out every month because it's just getting too expensive and I got a few donations at the end of last month that's helped me to pay uh, towards what I, you know, the podcast, the internet, all that stuff. But, you know, I don't want to have to keep asking for donations, so uh, I thought it would be better to just kind of cut my losses in a way and just get rid of the, the websites which is a little bit of a shame because they were growing quite nicely but uh, I had five websites plus the you know the jasonnewland.com one so I've moved the jasonnewland.com to blogger as a host so it's free so it's not a lot on there it's just a list it's the the player from Spreaker um, which has all my latest recordings on there that you can stream or download so it's always updated every day and that's how it's going to stay for a while unless I come into some money um, I'm going to have to just leave things as they are um, which is okay because I want to focus just on producing new material new podcasts and helping as many people as possible it has left a little bit of a void in my life I'll be honest because I quite I suppose I quite like the whole um, building websites and running them and checking the stats and updating them and it felt, you know, it's quite nice, it's quite a bit of fun, but uh, realistically my podcast, including this one, is so easy to listen to so easy to find um, you know you're listening to it so that proves that it is easy to find it's on all the main podcast hosts podcast directories you know Spotify iTunes or uh, Apple Music or no I suppose it would be Apple Podcasts, wouldn't it? Because they're changing. Or maybe they've already changed. And, you know, Stitch, uh, Spreaker is the home of all of my stuff. All of my podcasts are on Spreaker. And you can hear behind me, Andre's decided to Why 
Why does he do this? He hears me talking and he decides to just start running around and What he's just done and I can't believe what I've just seen him do in the middle of the carpet he's just done a big squelch a big little bit of melted chocolate And I'd spent hours cleaning this room, cleaning the carpet as well, actually washing the carpet. I put paper out, there's lots of paper out for him to go on. And he's just done it in the middle of the carpet, in the middle of the room. And I just, I don't know why I'm surprised at anything that he does. I just get surprised that he does it in front of me. He's so blatant. And because I couldn't, I could see he was just about to do it. I couldn't jump up out of the chair and grab him and put him onto the paper because there wasn't time and it would have made loads of noise and his squeaky chair and <sighs> he's he's many things but I can't use any of those words whilst I'm in a therapeutic frame of mind. So there was something, I can't even remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, so you can find these podcasts all over the place. Uh, especially, you know, well, you can get them online on you know your laptop or your computer, PC, or your tablet whether it's Android or uh, Apple. You can also listen to it on your phone. Again, whether it's Android phone or, um, you know, an iPhone. There's lots of different podcast uh, players. you can you can just look my name up you can just put in Jason Newland or you can put in let me bore you to sleep and cough then and uh, just out of interest it interests me I've got a podcast that's starting to bloom I kind of think of my podcasts as, you know, some have grown up to be trees, or they've grown up to be trees, you know, they've grown, they've sprouted a lot quicker than the others, like this one, the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Podcast, the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly Podcast, the two insomnia podcasts I've got so there's so that's what five podcasts that have grown into like little trees and can continue to you know continually growing some of them have had over 40,000 downloads already since November and you know continually to grow so 
by the end of the year they'll probably have a hundred thousand downloads each if not more but then there's others that are just plodding along with just a few few downloads every day I think I've only got one podcast that doesn't get any downloads hardly at all but most of them do most of them get even if it's only a few they get something they get some downloads every day so that's kind of the, the bottom of the heap as far as stats goes and then there's some that are growing and one such podcast is there's two there's the sleep hypnosis with music and that's growing steadily and that's not even on iTunes I don't think and another one is my daily hypnosis for anxiety uh, stress and panic attacks and I've now got I think nearly 10,000 downloads of that one but that's grown really slowly you know a few a day and then maybe 10 or 15 a day downloads and then growing and now it's is up there with how the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast was before I decided to make new ones to add to it because I just totally ignored that one I had seven episodes and that was all it was going to have in my mind you know it was completed and I'd made it years ago but due to the success or the popularity of it I th especially considering the small amount of episodes there are I thought ooh I wonder if I if I make another episode make number, number 8 and just see if anyone listens and I thought about it for a couple of months actually and then I couldn't I don't know I, don't know if I could be bothered but I wasn't sure if I just to just leave it as it was and then I thought hmm no I'll do one I'll do a I'll make a new session and I did and that was about five weeks ago I think maybe longer five or six seven weeks ago and I've been making one every week since once a week and again it's growing there's a big spike on the day that I upload the new recording but it's kind of like wow okay this is interesting and then I think hmm because I'm in a similar situation with the daily uh, stress relief and panic attack thing and I just think maybe I should start making some new recordings for that podcast 
The thing is, though, there's 34 episodes, which I did. I did 34 days in a row about three years ago, where I uploaded those onto YouTube, basically, and then, uh, yeah, probably onto a podcast as well. And they were fairly popular on YouTube at the time. I say popular, I mean, they didn't have millions of views, but they did, they, you know, they were quite popular on, in comparison to some of the other videos on my YouTube channel at that time. But a podcast really now is possibly more popular than they were on YouTube and it's growing it's really starting to kind of pick up and match some of the other podcasts on a daily basis but then the the kind of the issue comes up well if I start making new episodes for that podcast I kind of need to do one every day because it's got the it's got the word daily in it. So I don't know. I don't know if I it's uh, I try and make one of these every day, and I still don't manage that all the time try to make a new deep sleep whisper hypnosis every day but I don't manage to do that all the time the weekly the sleep hypnosis weekly sessions I'm supposed to do those on Fridays and I release this week's one on Sunday So I don't know what I'm going to do with like a daily thing. But on the other side, probably my, one of my, um, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a passion. But one of the things that I really know about due to personal experience is, uh, you know, anxiety, panic attacks, stress and all that stuff. So I can really put myself, put a lot of me into those recordings because I do know what I am talking about because you know I can make recordings to you know someone to to help someone with a phobia of pigeons I don't know what it's like to have that experience because I love pigeons and I don't mean in a pie I mean I just like I like pigeons it's uh, they're kind of a very it's a very English bird you know when I was a child Trafalgar Square in London used to be full of pigeons it was one of the national symbols of this country Trafalgar Square and people from all over the world would come and stand in Trafalgar Square and have pictures taken of them with pigeons all over them like on their head, on their hat their tiara their lunchbox 
their Ferrari, I don't know, whatever. Flip flops, you know, basically you could just get loads of pigeons just landing on you. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason that people from other countries travelled to England because you can see pigeons in other places I'm guessing that probably most major cities around the world even probably have pigeons because that's a, a pl good place for them to live if I remember rightly some cities in America have pigeons I'm sure I saw some pigeons in an episode of Cagney and Lacey I'm not saying that that's what the episode was about it wasn't about pigeons at all in fact there's one of those uh one of the more disappointing episodes where they focused on the marital relationships of the stars you know so there's not a lot of action I used to really like the the blonde um, police lady Detective. And the reason I'm saying blonde is because there was two. There's a brunette and a blonde, haired, human, but I don't remember who was who, as in names. I think that Cagney might have actually been the blonde one. The star of the show really was the brunette. She was... She was the bigger character. I don't mean... Um, physically. Although... She possibly was, but... She just had more... I think she just had more of a character, more more of a personality in the show and you got to see more of her personal life with her husband because her husband had a moustache now I'm not saying that was the only thing they ever focused on in the episodes when um they showed her at home with her husband it wasn't just about his moustache they didn't just sit there talking about it and you know discussing how long he's had it for and whether perhaps he needs to start dyeing it and maybe it needs a trim you know how how far away from the lip should the moustache start or end depending on which way you perceive the ending and the beginning to be in regards to facial hair now I'm not saying that that is what the only reason um, that the program was made it wasn't I don't think the the plot line for the pilot that was it introduced and you know shared with the TV producers uh, was aimed at his moustache I think it was more about the, the lead the lead singers no I'm not talking about I get muddled up so not lead singers the actors now I get muddled up because Abba also had a blonde lady and a brunette lady and I get 
muddled up between Abba and Cagney and Lacey. Also, if I remember rightly, one of the Abba ladies, uh, Gert and Bert, or what I forget which, what her name was, but she, Ingrid, Greta, something like that, and she, she married one of the musical geniuses let's say we could say the who wrote the songs because I think the two men not all of the songs I must say just in case you thought that you know Abba had this the idea that the ladies sung and the men wrote the songs and made the music and I think the only person that really just wrote all the songs was Barry Manilow because he wrote the songs people said to him do you, do you write the songs for Barry do you write the songs because you just want to make money and he said no he said well why do you write the songs he said I write the songs to make the whole world sing and Abba, the two men in Abba, Boris and Yanko, I forget their names, but they, one had a moustache, but it wasn't the same man that was in Cagney and Lacey. Now I do see the difference between them, because the one with the moustache in Cagney and Lacey wasn't in ABBA that's the kind of the that's the mark the little kind of click click to um, remind me that Cagney and Lacey you know was a different a different thing however there is a similarity because it's around the same kinds of time you know, late 70s, early 80s, and the two men in ABBA, one had a moustache. See, Tom Selleck also had a moustache and uh, Magnum P.I. and Burt Reynolds so there was a time when moustaches were really I don't know if it was popular or shameless or just visible or I don't know what the right word is but they were around they were definitely definitely around in the early 80s but all the way through the 70s and the 60s as well but for some reason kind of tail end of the 80s moustaches stopped being quite as amazing for some reason And I'm trying to think of other people, famous people that had moustaches during the 80s. So Alf Garnett, he was a, if you were in England, uh, if you've lived here for a long time, you'll probably know who Alf Garnett is, unless you're under the age of, well, 20 possibly you might not because he hasn't been on television for some while so he had a moustache 
I'll tell you who else. George Roper from George and Mildred. Now, I used to watch George and Mildred. But I kind of watched the reruns because I was too young to watch it. Because when it was on originally, it was the early 70s. And I was, I was little. You know, I wasn't what I wasn't interested in watching George and Mildred. I liked Terry and June, but he didn't have a moustache. I don't think Terry ever had a moustache. Terry from Terry and June. And for those that don't know who Terry and June are. It was a TV sitcom. June Whitfield, who's uh, who was in Ad Fab. She was uh, what's her name's mother in the show, and Terry Scott was her husband in the show. They weren't really married. But they were married in the show. So basically they pretended to be married. But only during filming. So when the filming stopped and someone shouted out, Cut. That's a rap. And that's long before raps were even popular. And... The you know they'd go back to just being co-workers, colleagues. They weren't really married, and I always used to think that must be quite confusing. You know it's. Uh, to sometimes maybe get muddled up a little bit confused am I married am I not married to them you know the filming stops and your partner your stage or television partner or husband or wife starts saying well you didn't wash the, pl- the plates up this morning why didn't you put the rubbish out? You forgot to pay the insurance bill. It's like, oh. Why don't you pleasure me anymore? I like, oh, huh? But we're not married. What do you mean we're not married? Well, Terry, we're not married. You moaned at me about doing the washing up, but but listen, Terry, you you've got a wife. You you're not married to me. We just but I don't know how to tell you. What, what is it, June? What is it? What is it, love? What you want an early night? Have an early have an early night? No, no, Terry, no. You have a wife. I have a husband and my child is in Ad Fab. What, Jennifer Saunders? Yes. Well how can that be? She's not even been on television yet. She doesn't she's it's years before she gets on television. I know, but just forget about that. So your daughter is Jennifer Saunders? Yeah. Really? No, oh, wait a minute, no, she's my... S- oh, now you're getting me confused. She's my stage daughter. Or, like, television daughter. Just like you're my television husband. What do you mean? We're not really married. That's exactly what I mean, Terry. 
Well, why do you call me Terry then? Because that's your name in the TV show. Yeah, but that's my name in real life as well. And your name is June. I know. But why? That's just confusing. It's probably just to make it a little bit easier. Why? Well, if you think about it, before this show started, what were you doing? Terry, what were you doing before this show started? Before we started filming this sitcom? Well, I was in loads of films, carry-on films. And would you say you were well-known? Yeah, of course, everyone knows who I am. Terry Scott, everybody knows. I'm famous. Okay. And I'm June Whitfield. And I've been in loads of films. Been a stage actress since I was a kid. Been in loads of films, carry on films, ealing comedies. Everybody knows my name. Yes, June, well, what are you trying to say? Well, I suppose because the audience already know who we are, it just seemed to make sense to call ourselves Terry and June. Because everyone knows us as Terry. They know you as Terry. They know me as June. But June... Yes, Terry. I don't know. I suppose it makes sense. Yeah, I see. Oh. So what about George and Mildred then? What about them? Were they coming over tonight for lunch? For have a dinner? For a dinner party? We're not having a dinner party. Why not, June? Because we're not married. We don't live together. But I thought we were... I was really looking forward to to the ropers coming around. You know? George and Mildred are my, my, my best friends. Terry, George and Mildred aren't real. What do you mean they're not real? I've seen them. George has a moustache. Ah. I was wondering how we got here. What do you mean? Well, I was wondering how we started then up, then up talking about Terry and June and... You know... What you call them? What, George and Mildred? Yeah, George and Mildred. How... It's all about a moustache, isn't it? What is it with you and moustaches? You just want to talk about one thing. You want to spend the whole hour just talking about one single subject. And you're happy just to spread it out as far as long, as long as possible, and just go into the most ridiculous scenarios just in order to stay on the subject of moustaches I have no idea what you're talking about June no idea eh no idea well let me tell you uh, actually wait a minute yeah George and Mildred are coming round Ah, I told you. Yeah. Bye then, bye. Yeah, I like George Milvin. It was, uh, he had a moustache. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. And, again, it was in the 70s. And, they were in a TV comedy. George and Mildred were the landlords of 
I think the TV show was Man About the House, was it? Cause, and then that turned into Robin's Nest. Like the the man that was starred in that. I think it was Man About the House. But it was a man. Sullivan, I forget his first name. But he got married. He, yeah, he lived in a house with two ladies. And they they were downstairs. And the landlord was... Or landlord and lady. But they lived upstairs. Was... George and Mildred Roper and George had a moustache and he was constantly kind of making himself unwelcome and disturbing them and and because they were such great characters they kind of stole the show when they were in it. When they, were, you know, when they when they appeared in episodes, they definitely shone brighter, perhaps, than some of the other characters in the show. So they ended up getting their own TV show, where they moved into a house in like a suburban area of London and it's like maybe like a posh well I don't know a posh area but the neighbours one of the neighbours was very stuck up and thought he was uh, like above them you know in the social ladder and George was just this constantly unemployed man with a moustache and he had a, a goldfish called Moby and when his goldfish passed away he got another goldfish and he called it Moby 2 and um one of my favourite lines of the show, because it was always quite sarcastic, he was. Well, both of them were sarcastic towards each other. And she, yeah, he's, he's sitting there. So George is sitting there. And his wife, Mildred, comes back, come, walks in through the front door, walks into the living room, and he says, where have you been Mildred and Mildred said I went to the hairdressers and quick as a flash he says oh so they they were closed then were they and it was funny with their delivery but and he'd be so brave. Yeah, he was... She was definitely the stronger of the two. And he had a he had a moustache. The neighbour... I think the next door neighbour also had a moustache. And he was an estate agent. I wonder what other people had moustaches in that show... No, I can't think of anyone. So what's the next show of moustaches? So uh, Magnum P.I. You could technically say that Tom Selleck, Magnum P.I. was a walking moustache. He basically just, his whole body was one big moustache because he was the hairiest human being ever on the planet. But he was adored. But I think a lot of that was to do with 
how handsome he was <laughs> not just because of the hairiness but he had a moustache but also and the dialogue was good you know it was, it was funny and it was dramatic and but there was also another man who was his landlord oh there's a there's a commonality here isn't there bit of a pattern bit of a pattern and his landlord was Mr Oizaki or I forget his name but he had a moustache which brings me to the karate kid now some of you may not know the Karate Kid, the original, which was the early 80s. And the actor in that, sh that film was actually a lot older than he looked. And he was in a couple of really good films. Um, like proper, classic, iconic films outside of the uh, you know the Karate Kid films but let's concentrate on the Karate Kid he basically was I think he moved towns with his mum mother and they so he went to a new school he was a teenager and he just went there and for some reason the there were some bullies there and they started like pushing them around and everything and he gets saved by this little man um that had a moustache and this little man does all these uh, martial, you know, karate moves and things on these children this grown man uh, beats up these children and so so far so good and we he goes and asks the Mr. Nagasaki Na Nagasaki I think his name was and he asked him to teach him karate and he said no he said go on please he said no he said why not he said I don't wanna what do you mean you don't wanna he said I don't have to if I don't wanna can't make me you're not the boss of me he said look look you, you have to do it he said where does it say I have to do it here in the script you know it's a very important part of the script if you say no at this point it's pretty much the end of the film ah oh. in that case if I'm going to do that then I'm going to get you to clean my car and paint the fence and that's going to be your training for karate and added to that I'm going to give you the pressure of competing in a karate competition which is going to be against black belts who have been training for many years and your training will be painting the fence and cleaning the car and please don't get those two muddled up please don't get those two muddled up because I can't afford another car please don't paint my car Please just wash it. 
and just paint the fence. And if you do everything I say, I will let you touch my moustache. And he said, I don't want to touch your moustache, but I would like to learn karate if you've entered me for a karate contest. I mean, I'll be very happy with your training. If it was a car washing contest, I think I would do quite well. But, you know what I mean? And he said, I do not know what you mean. He said, wait a minute. So what are you going to do? They said, I'm going to catch that fly with these chopsticks. Why? What do you mean, why? Why are you catching a fly with the chopsticks? What's the point in that? It's a way of showing off my quick skills and my amazing cat-like reflexes. Meow. Yeah, but I still don't understand because... I'll be honest, I've never seen a cat use chopsticks. Listen, it's not about the chopsticks. It's not about the cat. It's about proving that I'm super cool and mega quick. Okay. See? Now, can we just get to the scene where I catch the fly with the chopsticks? Alright. Right, okay, you can let the fly go now, he's ready. Click. What was that sound? That was the sound of the chopsticks closing and catching the fly. Yeah, but you just said click. You verbally just said the word click. That isn't the sound of anything other than you just saying the word click. Why do you question me? Why wouldn't I question you? You've not taught me no karate yet. But I shall, my son, I shall. What did you say? I said I shall. No, before that. I said click. No, after that. Uh, I don't know. You called me son. Yes, your mum wanted me to tell you. The DNA test came back. And uh, we are indeed related. Are you sure that you're my dad? Well, either I'm your dad or I'm your mother. What? That's the DNA test. I'm your, I'm your parent. So I, I, if I can't be your dad, I must be your mother. Click. Why do you keep saying click? I don't know. I'm just a bit nervous, if I'm honest. I wasn't sure what else to do. Right, so how long have you been wanting to tell me this? I mean, how long have you known? Oh, I've known for about 13 years. So you've known most of my life? Yeah. So why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you come and see me sooner? Oh, being busy. Doing what? Catching... <laughs> Catching flies. <laughs> Click. 
click. Oh, okay. And basically what happens is they have the contest and but yeah, the main part of that story is he has a moustache. Trying to think of other people that have moustaches. Um, I'm trying to think. Burt Reynolds had a moustache. So. I was going to say he wasn't in any TV shows, but he was, wasn't he? He was in a sitcom. I forget what it was. What was the sitcom Burt Reynolds was in? Ah. I'm sure he was. I like Burt Reynolds. So what other moustachey people? Actually, I was named after a moustache. And you may think, oh yeah, here we go, another lie. No, it's true. See, in the 60s, I don't know what time in the 60s, the date or the year, I'm not sure, but there was a, and I've seen it, I've actually seen the show online, there was a television show called Jason King, and he was a, I think he was like a private detective, and he was a proper I don't want to say the word misogynist but he's very a womanizer but he was this super supposed to be super attractive suave rich you know and then he had a moustache now my dad had a moustache in the 60s and the 70s And his friends used to call him Jason King because, well, I don't know, I think for a few reasons, but he, they called him Jay, it was his nickname for a bit, apparently. And that's why he called me Jason. So I'm not named after any family members but I am named after a tele a television character which kind of is the furthest away from who I am because well, I'm not a detective I'm not rich Technically, I don't have a moustache, but I do. I have a beard, like a full beard. So it's top lip and bottom lip and jaws and, you know, everything. So, well, not everything. My knees are not included. But one day, the moustache may, the beard rather, may go all the way down to my ankles. And that'll be a celebratory day of wonderment. That'd be really cool. I'm looking forward to that for some reason. And that's why I was called Jason, because of my dad looking like a television character. Could have been worse. Could have been called Scooby-Doo. 
So I'm trying to think. You know, during the nineties, I can't think of one person with a moustache that was famous and there's probably loads but I can't think of one all the 2000s or this decade even Mind you, I'll leave you on this. Uh, I remember years ago I went to London and there's actually a hypnosis training course I was going to. And I was on my lunch break. It was near the embankment. And I I see someone walking towards me and they had... Their hair, their hair was jet black, quite short, but brushed over to one side. And they had what I'm going to describe in nicer terms, a Charlie Chaplin moustache. Except he didn't look like Charlie Chaplin. And it's like, wow. I can't believe you're walking around the streets like that. And he said, yeah, at least I got my trousers on. I said, I had an accident. They're still drying. So, that's the end of this. Um kind of like a tribute to moustaches really (laughs) so I'm going to go now hopefully you're fast asleep and I bored you completely to sleep neem 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 and I'll speak to you next time bye 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 bye